Hi there, this is Ryan Schultz and welcome to Metaverse Newscast, the show where we interview the personalities behind social VR, virtual worlds, and the metaverse. My guest today is Jason Moore, a filmmaker who has embraced virtual reality and is working on something called the Meta Movie Project. So Jason, what is a Meta Movie? A meta movie is kind of a new way of telling and experiencing stories. Unlike a regular movie, um, you don't just watch a meta movie, you experience it. We put on uh, a, a performance that's somewhere between uh, interactive theater, a traditional movie, video games, and role playing like Dungeons and Dragons. And essentially, we have uh, a traditional cinema script with uh, heroes and bad guys and plot twists. We have a set that we build here in the metaverse. And we bring in live actors and rehearse the actors so they learn their roles and they learn their dialogue and their blocking. And we bring in one audience member at a time. We call them the VIP. And the VIP comes in and they role play. They're part of the story. The story unfolds all around them. And whatever the VIP wants to do or say, they can do that. The actors are all trained in improv theater. And we end up with something that's like being inside a movie. It's pretty cool. Okay, so my first question is, when you're doing it for one person at a time, how on earth are you going to scale that effectively? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, you know, the first couple of years that I've been working on this, I've really just been trying to make it work and just make the experience for the VIP as um, dynamic and as immersive as possible. But everybody asks me that. They, they, they're all curious to know, well, how can we ever share this with a lot of people if only one person at a time can come through? And I've been thinking about that a lot. And so I've come up with this concept called the Firefly Experience. And the Firefly Experience allows us to bring in many, many more people into a meta movie. What we oh, do cool. essentially, what we do is we give somebody a little Firefly avatar. It's about this big and it's really cute and it's fun and it can fly and zoom everywhere. And what we say is when the performance is happening, just please be quiet and try not to distract the VIP and the actors, but otherwise go and watch the performance from anywhere you want. So the VIP is having this massively interactive experience and one or two or five or 10 fireflies are all kind of buzzing around or maybe perched up there and watching from different angles. Um, we just launched this a couple of weeks ago and I just had the my first time going through one of these performances as a firefly. And man, it was like the most fun in VR I've ever had. So we're really excited about rolling out this this um, new way to experience a meta movie doing the Firefly experience. That's great. That sounds yeah. wonderful. I can't wait to actually try that as a Firefly. Yeah, so can you tell me like a little it. bit about your current meta movie? Yeah. So the, the one that we're working on now is called The Heist. And it's a 20-minute action-adventure thriller piece where the VIP plays the part of a bank teller caught in between a notorious bank robber and the undercover cop trying to take him down. So the VIP comes in and they're kind of, they meet the undercover cop and they, they get kind of pulled into the story. And I, I don't want to say too much about what happens next, but um, it's, it's fun. It's action. There's a chase scene. There's a shootout. There's some weird surprises and twists. Um, and we're just having a blast with it. Oh, wow. That sounds wonderful. So um, I know that this is not a solo project for you. Can you talk a little bit about how you're collaborating with other people here on the High Fidelity platform to create this? Yeah. I mean, I could never have done this alone. And it was literally the people here in High Fidelity that made this project happen. Um, when I first started about two years ago, I started meeting some of the alphas um, like Adrian and William Brown, who've, all, who've been around a long time, and they started showing me how to world build. And then I met people like Judas and, and Chris McBride and, and so many other people who are giving me advice or who are contributing by writing software scripts or designing avatars. At this point, there's probably between 12 and 15 of us working together. Um, and I just, this community is so incredible and supportive and creative and intelligent and fun. Um, you know, I, this, this project is about the collaborative nature of high fidelity. And I think it's really cool. Okay. I understand that uh, you are starting a crowdfunding initiative for meta movie and on Kickstarter. So can you talk a bit about that, please? Yeah. So um, I've been working and, and financing the Meta Movie Project for about two years. Um, I'm, I'm paying for it out of my own pocket. And, and oh, wow. nobody's, 
Nobody's okay. getting rich. I'm, I'm giving a little bit of money to my actors and the designers and everybody who's helping me out. But frankly, I'm starting to run out of money. Um, so the kick, the Kickstarter campaign is designed to help me raise $10,000. And if I can raise that money, I can do a couple of things. I can give some money to all my contributors and collaborators who've been so generous with their time. Um, it'll help us keep running the heist for another couple of months. And I'll be able to fund two new meta movies, um, and, and that's and that's why we're doing the Kickstarter, so that we can keep the project going and, and try to advance the next couple of ones. So tell me a little bit about this whole project. What are the biggest challenges you found so far in trying to create this sort of interactive experience in virtual reality? I think there's kind of two types of challenges that we have. Um, we have the technical challenges of trying to just work with emerging technology like VR. So, you know, we're building on a platform like High Fidelity that's, you know, still in beta. So things don't always work correctly. And we have glitch issues and, you know, frame rate issues or, or things kind of go missing. And it can be uh, a little bit challenging in that way. But then there's also the conceptual challenge, which I think is actually even harder. Doing a, a completely interactive story where the audience member has complete freedom to do or say anything they want is really, really difficult from a storytelling perspective. Because what do you do if your audience member turns around and walks the other way while you're trying to perform your story? You've got to figure out a way to, to keep them involved and to respond to them. So, um, I, I okay, tell so people, do your actors have improv training to deal with yes, this sort of situation? Yes, they do. They have a okay. lot of improv training. Um, but even then, every time that we run a, a new performance, we learn something new. We learn, we see a VIP trying something that we never anticipated or, or behaving in a way that was completely unexpected to us. So we have to keep coming back and discussing and rehearsing and practicing and thinking like, well, what do we do if this happens? Or what do we do if that happens? So it's, okay. a, it's, a, it's a big challenge, but it's a lot of fun. So I wanted to ask you, since this is the first one show that we've filmed after Philip Drosdale made his sort of a bombshell announcement that High Fidelity was no longer going to be managing any of their own public servers, what do you think about Philip's announcement? What do you think that's going to mean for High Fidelity? That's a great question. I, you know, I was pretty shocked when I heard that announcement. And at first I was kind of a little bit sad and disappointed when I heard that they were moving away from social VR. Yes. But you know what? As I thought about it, it, it really makes perfect sense. I mean, you know, they have responsibility to their shareholders and their investors. And as he said, if the current model isn't working because adaption of VR is uh, slower than they anticipated, then they have to pivot. I mean, you know, you don't want high fidelity to go away. So if they need to, to look for other revenue streams, then, then that's what they have to do. And what I thought was really great, and, and frankly, I learned this from reading your blog, um, is reading about Caitlin's quotes, uh, her response to that. And, you know, she was really inspiring. She talked about the fact that this was the time for the community to really come together and decide what they wanted High Fidelity to be. And I think that's brilliant. And I completely am on board with that. Um, I've already yeah, the started high fidelity, this. The High Fidelity Federated User Group had their first meeting on uh, Friday, I think it was, and I attended that. And there's a lot of energy. People are looking at this as an opportunity to pick up something that High Fidelity is dropping. Yeah, I mean, I think the community here has always been what, what is so excited, what's so exciting about High Fidelity. And I think this is just an opportunity for all of us who are invested in, in being here and working here to come together and see what we can do. Um, I mean, this is what an open source platform is all about anyway, yeah. right? It's supposed exactly. to be about us. So maybe it's maybe this is the perfect timing for, for the, you know, the original staff of, of High Fidelity to kind of back off a little bit and say, all right, it's your turn, you know, take a lead. I, I'm, you know, I'm ready to, to work here. I, I love High Fidelity. I'm not going anywhere. So you're working on the heist right now. Are you already taking VIPs through and having them experience this? Yes, we are. We're performing uh, on select Mondays. You know, with the cast and, and the crew can only really get together about once a week based on everybody's schedule. So on select Mondays, we're inviting VIPs in. Um, we've had maybe seven or eight performances over the last two months, and each time we're learning something new. Um, when we launch the Kickstarters, I'll be kind of selling VIP tickets. I mean, we don't. We're not. A, we're a work in progress. So I'm not suggesting that we have some great product to, to for you to buy. But you know, I'm hoping that people will support us by. By giving us a little bit of money and coming through. So the idea is that we'll start to run the heist, you know, on every single Monday coming, you know, for the next couple of months. So are these meta movie experiences something that will be recorded so that other people can view them? 
That's a great question. Um, you know, I use the word meta movie because I love movies and the types of stories that I want to tell are, are based in, in kind of cinema. But as a matter of fact, a meta movie is performed live. It's the only way that we can give a VIP a, a truly interactive experience if they're, if they're interacting with actors live. Now, we can record it, but boy, it takes a lot of work because our meta movies don't just stay in one place like a, like a theater play. We move all over the place. So I'm not planning on recording every single meta movie. However, uh, on our Kickstarter project, we do have a Kickstarter reward called the Take It With You. Um, it's not cheap. It's several hundred dollars. But if you buy that reward, we will bring in several virtual videographers and we will record the entire performance from multiple angles and then edit it together so that you walk away with your own version of a meta movie that is recorded and edited that you can show to people. But generally oh, wow. speaking, generally speaking, a meta movie will always be performed live. And, um, you know, you'll just have to kind of live on that memory and that of what you did. My next question is, uh, after the heist, what's next for the meta movie project? Well, if the Kickstarter fund um, gets funded, if we can raise $10,000 with Kickstarter, then what I'll be able to do is I'll be able to keep running the heist for several months. By I can pay the actors and collaborators. And then we have two other meta movies that are in the works. Both of those scripts are already written. We're cast. We're ready to go. The, the next one that we've got on tap is called The Bright Side of the Moon. It's a supernatural drama. We're hoping to set it in Crompton Moore that was created by Judas. Um, and that meta movie is designed to help us work on an intimate story that is character-based. I'm really interested in how um, emotional I can tell an interactive story. The heist is very kind of action-packed and fun and over-the-top, and, and Brightside is designed to be something a little bit more intimate and quiet. And then we have a third meta movie called Alien Rescue, and this one is our most ambitious one yet. And it's where we try to solve the VIP problem. The uh, the, the VIP issue, only bringing one, one VIP in at a time, is, is limiting, in my opinion. I would like to have more VIPs be able to experience a meta movie at the same time. So Alien Rescue is written for two VIPs to go through together at the same time. We don't have really any idea about how we're going to manage all of that crazy, unexpected um, behavior, but we cannot wait uh, to try it out. Oh, very interesting. Yeah, well, I would think with two rogue I mean, two VIP people in the same film, both of whom you have no idea what they're going to do or what they're going to say. That's just going to compound the chaos and the it's improvisation. Be out of control. It's going to be out of control. But, you know, no matter what happens, every time we do one of these performances, it's wildly entertaining. It's never what we expect. Nothing ever goes exactly how we got it planned. But at the end of the day, when we're over, we all sit back and go like, wow, what, it just, what just happened there? So, so I'm pretty excited. So uh, if somebody wants to take part in this, how do you become a VIP? Well, there's a couple different ways. Um, at the moment, if you just, if any high fidelian wants to give this a try, all they have to do is find me. I'm in world a lot, or they can, um, PM me. My, my username is Jason Mo, and they can find me that way. Um, even better would be that once we launch the Kickstarter, and I'll announce it here in High Fidelity, and I'll, and I'll put it on the forums, um, even better would be if they would go to the Kickstarter and support us by buying a VIP ticket, which we're going to sell for $75. Oh, okay. Obviously, this has been a hell of a lot of work for you guys. Um, what has been the most rewarding thing about this whole project? You know, I think the collaboration, honestly, I mean, it's just, it's been so challenging and so interesting to try to tell stories in a new way. But what I've liked most is just meeting and working with all of these incredibly talented and giving people from the, the designers and the software engineers and just the people who've come in and lent a hand to, you know, to folks like Andrew and Carlos who are, who are shooting video and, and meeting and working with you. I think just the, just the community aspect of doing a project kind of in a new place, uh, um, under new circumstances, that's really been the most rewarding. That's wonderful. Well, I'd like to thank you so much for talking with me today. And once again, this is Ryan Schultz, and you're watching Metaverse Newscast. Thank you for watching.